All right, welcome to our second task. So our second task is this page. I'm going to do a little talking about it. I'm going to be flipping my paper over and drawing some rectangles for you. But again, you should always read what it's about and take a look at your graph. So this says, suppose you want a prospect, I'm sorry, curiosity landed on Mars. So suppose you want a prospect for a precious metal on Mars using curiosity. You're able to stake a claim to any rectangular piece of land that can be surrounded by 20 meters of laser fencing. And the graph to the left shows the possible areas that correspond to the different widths of our rectangular pieces of land. And they do mention in here that this is in meters, so I'm going to write meters for my x-axis. And when you do area, you use the square meters in your answer. Okay, so maybe take a moment and write that down. Okay, and again, remember, you can pause. So let me kind of explain what's going on here, because that's what Mrs. Lawson does. So on the back, and you don't need to do this, but I got a rectangle, and when you're prospecting for um, some metals and stuff, you're, you're basically like excavating, you're um, digging, you're looking for something new. And I have 20 meters of laser fencing that can go around this rectangle. And when that goes around, that's called the perimeter. So for instance, if I decide to use four meters of fencing on this side, I'd have four there. And of my 20 meters so far, I've got eight of them used up, which means I have 12 left for this side and this side. And then since it's a rectangle, I would split that 12 up with six and six. So that's basically what's happening, okay? Um, and if you take a look, for instance, going with that, um, just going back to this rectangle again, my perimeter is 20 because you add up all the sides and you get 20, but my area is 24 when you take the length times the width, the base times the height. So my area is 24 square meters, and you can also put that little square behind the meters. So for instance, if you look at that graph, that's what this is saying here. If my width is 4, and I go all the way up, that number is actually 24. That's what I just told you here. So what we're going to do is there's going to be seven questions to answer. Um, I think we'll do like two of them together, and then your job is to then get the other five. And you'll get up, you'll walk around, stretch your legs, and again, help Mr. Megal out, be good for him. All right, so every time we work with a graph, we mark our important points. So where it starts, 0, 0, where it ends, 10, 0, and where it turns, 5 and 25. And then we also want to mark our x-intercepts, but I got those here. All right, so I've got the questions here. Um, you're going to have them blue, and I'm just going to pick out two of them. Um, so I'm going to pick out question two and do that with you. And then I think I'll do question five with you. So I'll do question two, question five, and then you'll get the others as you walk around. So as you walk around, this is exactly what you're going to see, but it's going to be in blue. So you have the graph. It's just another reminder of the graph, but your question whoops, is going to be at the bottom. And so for question five, you know, I'll go to my answer spot and fill it in here. But let's start with question two. All right, question two says, over what interval for W is increasing. So I'm looking for my increasing interval. And this is my increasing, and this is my decreasing. So for question two, I'm going to put my increasing interval. I'll just put a little reminder that this was increasing. And again, it says over what interval for W. When we do this whole thing, we usually use X with our between symbols. And again, if you don't want to use X, you could use W. You could actually write the word without. That's totally up to you. All right. And I want to put where does that increasing start and where does it end? And I use the X value. So it starts at zero until it gets to the top at five. So zero to five. And that one's done. Um, next question five says evaluate a of 10. So we'll do that. And what is the meaning of a of 10 in this context? So again, when the number's in the parentheses, this is question five, that means if x is that number. So if x is 10. So if x is 10, and I look here, my answer is zero. And what does that mean? Well, again, this is x, 
and x's width in meters. So 10 meters. And then this is y, which is my area. So I have an area of 0. So if the width is 10, and I want to use my unit of measurement, meters, then there is no area because it's zero. Okay, so um, you can write that down, you can pause, but I'll quickly explain why that is the case. So again, going back to this rectangle, if I have an area of, I make one width 10, then again, because of the rectangle, this side has to be 10. And already, of my 20 meters of fencing, I've used them both up. There's no room to make this side of the rectangle or this side. So if I don't have a rectangle, I don't have an area. I don't have a length times the width or a base times the height. So that's why that one is zero. So what you're going to do now is answer questions 1, 3, 4, 6, 7. This should take you, um, I'm going to tell him to give you about five minutes on this. And when you're done, you're going to return to your seat and he will share with you the answer key and hopefully you have a discussion or you ask questions if your answer doesn't match the answer that he's going to share with you. Um, after this, we're going to move into our Kahoot. So you might want to keep this computer for the Kahoot game or you can use your phone and you will also need a calculator. So if you haven't gotten a calculator yet, you know where they are. They're in the basket at the front.